Okay, Assalamualaikum. Hi, good morning everyone. Hi. So today, um, we are going to learn about another type of um, immunity response, which is the adaptive immunity. So last week, we already covered the innate immunity. And now, um, there are two types of adaptive immunity, which is uh, cell-mediated and also antibody-mediated or humoral immunity. But today, we are going to cover first the cell-mediated response. At the end of the lecture today, I expect you should be able to list main characteristics of specific immunity and also describe the principles and components of cell-mediated immunity and also to understand the cell-mediated response mechanism of action as specifically by the T lymphocyte, sorry, the cytotoxic T lymphocyte. So the lecture content uh, for today that we are going to cover is the principal features and types of adaptive immunity and also the overview of cell-mediated immunity, the cell and types of uh, cell-mediated immunity. And also I will briefly explain about uh, the antigen recognition between uh, the infected cells and also the T helper cells. And also we are going to look at different types of major histocompatibility complex, the MHC, that express uh, in the surface of uh, the cells. And we're going to learn about the cytotoxic T lymphocytes, the, T, the CTL mediated cytotoxicity response, and also the cell cells communication mediated by the cytokines. So I've shown this uh, figure for you last week, and we are going to uh, recall it back. So last week we learned about the innate immunity. So when there is invading pathogens making entry to our body, so there is innate immunity that has be, uh, it is activated and it is divided uh, for internal defenses and also uh, external defenses and internal defenses. So what happened when the invading uh, pathogens are very potent and strong that the internal defense, the second line defense of innate immunity are insufficient. So that is when the acquired or adaptive immunity is activated to further enhance or making uh, the internal defense more effective, okay? Okay, so this is the overview of the immune system. So for adaptive immunity, we can divide it into two types, cell-mediated immunity and also the humoral immunity. So for this week, we are going to cover the cell-mediated immunity first. So, but first, what is the adaptive immunity, the third line of defense? So, you have to know in adaptive immunity, it is antigen-specific defense mechanism. And it occurs after exposure to antigen, either from a pathogen infection or vaccination processes. And it is activated uh, when the innate immune response is insufficient or um, lack of response in eliminating the pathogens. So that is when the adaptive immunity is activated. So the major components of adaptive immunity is the lymphocytes, the white blood cells. And as I say, there are two major types of adaptive immunity, which is the cell-mediated immune response that driven by the T cells, and also the humoral immune response activated B cells and antibody uh, regulated. So there are features of uh, adaptive immunity that you need to know the features or the characteristic of the adap adaptive immunity make it um, different from the innate immunity. So you have to know that in adaptive immunity, there is a specificity, which is the ability to target specific pathogens through their unique antigens. And there are also specific antibodies that being secreted so against a particular antigens, which... Um, which is not occur in the innate immunity. So the diversity, which is the ability to recognize different types of antigens and each different pathogens can be targeted specifically. And also in adaptive immunity, um, there is ability to distinguish or differentiate between self antigens and also the foreign antigens. And that 
the disability uh, to differentiate the self antigens from the foreign antigen could lead to the autoimmune disease. That is where your uh, cells of the immune system attacking um, themselves. That is uh, the autoimmune uh, disease. And importantly, in adaptive immunity is where the memory is created. Ability to remember the antigen and respond again to the same exposure or subsequent exposure, we create the immunological memory. So what is immunological memory? So immunological memory is uh, generated upon each exposure, the first time exposure of an antigen and specific to that antigen. So that subsequent or the second exposure, exposure or subsequent exposure, the system, the immune system already have uh, the memory to counter the same antigen again. Okay, that is uh, occur prior the infections of the pathogens or also from the vaccination processes. So the first exposure to specific antigens, uh, we call it the primary immune response. And the secondary or subsequent uh, immune response, we call it secondary immune response. It, it is where the memory cells uh, facilitate faster, more efficient response in eliminating the antigen. Okay. So if you look at this uh, figure, uh, there are, um, it shows the difference between the primary response and also the secondary response. In primary response, when the unit immunity is insufficient, that is where the adaptive immunity is activated days after the, the, the first um, exposure or prior to infection. But the adaptive uh, activation here is um, limited, uh, I mean, not so fast, it takes slower response to be activated, but compared to the secondary response upon the second exposure, the innate immunity already uh, being activated, but require activation of adaptive immunity. But this time, for the secondary or subsequent um, exposure to antigen, the same antigen from the first exposure, so the adaptive immunity will be uh, more faster and more efficient in targeting um, the infectious, uh, the infection. Okay, so this is the difference between the first uh, exposure and also the second exposure. I give an example here, infection with varicella zoster virus that uh, caused the chicken pox. So when individual recover from a chicken pox, uh, the first exposure. So the, the, the body already developed a memory of the infection that will specifically protect it from the virus. So upon the re-exposure to the virus again, so the immune system already has the memory of the virus and it will be able to respond faster and stronger uh, uh, compared to the first exposure. So usually uh, the second exposure causes no illness from the chicken pox. So the person uh, still uh, stay healthy, but eventually the body is uh, counter uh, the attack from the uh, for the viruses second time. Okay, that is how the immunologic memory is created to counter uh, the subsequent attack. So there are two types of adaptive immunity, which is the cell mediated immunity that is regulated by the T lymphocyte cells, and it is usually via the direct lysis of the target or infected cells by cytotoxic T cells and also the production of cytokines that activate infected cells to kill the pathogen. And also the second one is the humoral immunity which is mediated by the B cells to be activated uh, for the antibody secretion and release into the bloodstream. Okay, and antibodies, what it do is that it binds to the antigens and deactivates them. Okay, so this is uh, the overview of the mechanism of adaptive immune response. Okay, there are different types of exposure to the pathogens, foreign proteins, viruses, bacteria, parasites, fungi, and the adaptive immunity can be divided into humoral and also cell mediated. So in cell mediated, it is uh, regulated by the T lymphocyte. So T lymphocyte can be uh, activated upon the exposure to the pathogens by um, series of uh, activation that releasing the cytokines. That cytokines later will involve in cell, cells interaction or signaling. 
to promote the B cells to be activated and to secrete the antibodies. So this letter, we will learn about it next week. So let's focus for today's topic first. And upon the T cells activation also, we lead to the uh, cytotoxic T cells to be further activated. That cytotoxic usually involves indirect killing of the infected cells, usually by promoting the program cell death. So you have to know uh, these two different um, division on how uh, the activation of T cell will affect uh, the killing of the pathogens. Okay, let's move on to the first uh, type, the cell-mediated immunity or CMI. So cell-mediated immunity is directed to, uh, to kill the pathogen that survive within the human cells and also to target towards process part of the infected microbe as displayed on the surface of antigen presenting cell. So if you still remember, last week I explained about the antigen presenting cell. Uh, for example, the macrophages or dendritic that are able to phagocytos, uh, phagocytize the uh, pathogens and then upon phagocytosis by uh, the lysosome releasing uh, the peptides uh, on the surface of the macrophages. So that peptide will be recognized by the the helper in the cell mediated immunity. Okay, that is the collaboration between the innate and also the adaptive immunity. Okay, so this type of immune response is especially effective against the following types of organism and cell. For example, intracellular pathogens, usually derived from the viruses, fungi, protozoa, etc., that are attacking and hiding inside body cells that are that are already uh, penetrate uh, the first and second line defense and also uh, targeting the cancer cells and as well as the cells of the tissue transplant. So all these three uh, types of uh, cells or system is uh, specific for cell-mediated immunity. Okay. So you have to know the major cellular components of uh, cell-mediated uh, immunity and also the humoral immunity is the lymphocyte. So during the fetal development, there is a process called the hematopoiesis, where the hematopoietic stem cell divided and differentiated into a red, uh, white blood cells, the lymphocyte. And this lymphocyte is produced actually from the bone marrow. And there are B lymphocyte mature in the bone marrow, but the T cells mature in the thymus. So it has a different, because it has a different maturation site, also it has a... Um, different functions between the T and B cells. So T cells mediate the cellular immunity specifically, spec specifically to control the intracellular pathogens and also to control the tumor progression. But for the B, specifically to control the extracellular pathogens and mediate allergy and also hypersensitivity. And both B and T will cooperate for effective immunity. For example, the T cell may uh, be needed for the B cell activation and B cells may present antigen to be recognized by the T uh, cells. Okay, we will learn in detail each of these mechanism after this, okay, not to be worried. Okay, let's first look at the T cells. So the T represent the thymus because it's been produced um, in the uh, bone marrow, but for the maturation, it will move to the thymus to mature into different types of cells for example the t helper cells and from the t cells also become the mature cytotoxic t cells and also the regulatory or suppressor t cells or the t-rex and both t helper and t-rex acquire surface protein and glycoprotein that uh, express in its surface we call it as a, as a cd4 and cytotoxic t acquire surface protein uh, called the cd8 sometimes when you look at the illustration you um, they, 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 they may use the CD4 as a representative of the T helper. So you know that the CD, CD4 is a T helper or T right, usually a T helper. And when it stays, the CD8, it represents the cytotoxic T cells. And all the T cells acquire surface protein that function as T cells antigen receptor. So it have the antigen receptor to recognize a specific or particular antigens on the infected cells. Okay, so this is a pathway for cell uh, T cell differentiation. 
produced in the bone marrow and as for the T cells, it will move to the thymus to mature as a CD8, the T cells, the cytotoxic uh, T cells or CD4 or uh, other uh, subset of uh, the T cells. So the first type of T cells that you need to uh, know is the helper or CD4 cells. So from the name itself, it represents its roles to help. So the first one to help uh, B cells to produce antibodies against a foreign antigen. And also to help activate the killer T or the cytotoxic T cells to kill the foreign or abnormal cells. And also help to activate macrophages, enabling them to ingest foreign or abnormal cells more efficiently. Okay, so this is the functions of the helper T cells or CD4 cells. So look at the structure here. So this is the structure of helper T cells. So it has the express expression of a T cell receptor, which binds to the MHC class 1 uh, here on its surface. And it also have a glycoprotein or CD4 expressed on its surface. Okay, there are two types of uh, T helper. T helper 1, which involve in uh, cell-mediated immunity and also TH2 basically to um, involve in characterization to release the interleukin-4, which result in the B cells activation to secrete the antibodies. So it involves in the humoral immunity. So please remember, TH1 involved in cell-mediated immunity and TH2 involved in humoral immunity. So this is an illustration I uh, put, as, put as an example here. For example, this is a macrophages, which is a type of antigen-presenting cell. So a phagocytosis occur here and um, upon digestion by the lysozyme will uh, ingest the pathogens and that the peptide from the pathogens ingestion will be expressed at the surface making complex with the MHC class 2 receptor on the macrophages uh, surface. That this complex of MHC and peptide will be recognized by the T cell receptor. So here is the T cell. So it has the antigen presenting uh, receptor on its surface. So it will recognize uh, the complex of uh, binding of MHC and also the peptide antigen. So this is how the T helper recognize the antigen presenting cells. Okay, number one, helping uh, beta cell uh, B cells to produce antibodies again for its antigen. So this is the B cells also have the expressing um, MHC class 2 with the peptide antigen on its surface that is recognized by the T cells receptor. That the binding here will further activate the B cells uh, to produce the antibodies okay, for the further uh, humoral immunity uh, responses. So this is um, the example of the role of the helper T cells. Okay, so far everyone is following. If I'm going too fast or you don't understand, you just interrupt me, okay? Okay, next is the killer T cells or cytotoxic T cells or CD8 cells. So T cells, uh, TC cells attached to particular foreign or abnormal infected cells by making holes in their cell membrane and injecting enzyme into the cells or by binding with certain sites on their surfaces called the death, death receptor. So this is the immature uh, CD8 T cells. So upon um, binding or recognition to the antigen presenting cell, it will further activate and become mature cytotoxic T cells. And mature cytotoxic T cell will um, further attach or um, making a contact with the uh, infected cells that the contact of the cytotoxic T cells and the infected cell, we further release the what we call it as a granzyme or the porphyrins. Here, the granzyme porphyrin will be released that it will be um, attached to the infected cells and making uh, the, in the, the infected cells um, forming the granules on the surface that the granules will eventually killing the cells by uh, action of the porphyrins and also the granzyme. We will look at the detail on how the cytotoxic T cell mediated immunity. Uh, I think at the end of uh, this 
lecture. The last part, okay. So the other types of T cells is the suppressor or regulatory T cells. So what it do is that it produces substances that help end the immune response or sometimes prevent certain harmful responses from occurring. And it also involves in down regulation, induction, and proliferation of affected T cells, the activated T cells. So it usually involved in uh, recognizing um, the self um, the self uh, immune cells basically involved in the autoimmune disease to recognize the self um, self cells from the non self antigen. Okay, basically the mechanism is the same. Uh, the antigen recognition is the same, just that the role uh, is different. But mechanism of the antigen recognition um, to the APC or other effector cell is the same. So I listed here uh, different types, more comprehensive, more detail of different types of cells that involve in cell-mediated immunity. So these two uh, is the types of the T cells, the antigen cytotoxic T cells or killer cells and the helper T cells. And also I included the antigen presenting cell also involved in CMI and activated macrophages which involve in uh, killing the microbe and tumor cells, stimulate inflammation, production of cytokines and so on. And also other natural killer cells and stimulating cells. So the first, when you want to look at the whole mechanism on how the cell-mediated immunity is um, regulated, so you should know how actually the invaders are recognized. That is by the antigen. So if you look at this mature B cell, it has an expressing antigen receptor on its surface and also mature T cell also have the antigen receptor expressing on its surface. So what is antigen? Antigen is protein substance that serves as a cellular nanotech. Okay, it, it, it is as a tagging for cell-cell uh, interaction. And there are two types of antigens, which is, which is the exogenous antigens. And exogenous antigen is that antigen that enter the body from my environment, include the inhaled macromolecules, ingested micromolecules, molecules introduced beneath the skin, for example, that is the exogenous antigen. And also antigen that generated within the cell of the host, for example, protein encoded by viral gene that have infected the cells and also aberrant protein um, that are encoded by the mutant gene. That is the endogenous antigen. Okay. So the exposure to the pathogens will activate the B and T cells with antigen receptor specific uh, for the part of the pathogens on its surface. And the small accessible part of the antigen that bind to antigen receptor on the T or B lymphocyte or antibody is called the epitope here. So this is uh, the structure of the antigen. So it has the epitopes expressing on its surface that this epitope will recognize the antigen receptor on the T uh, cells or the B cells or the antibody. And different lymphocytes different, uh, respond differently to antigens. So T cells recognize the antigen fragments, which is the pathogens which already infected the cells. I, uh, If you still remember, the APC ingested um, the pathogen and then releasing uh, the peptide on the surface, on its surface, right? So the peptide, peptide is called the antigen fragment that is expressed uh, on the outer surface of the macrophages or antigen presenting cell. And B cell recognize the intact antigens, so pathogens that circulated in blood and also the limbs. So if you look at here, the epitopes recognize a specific um, antibody. Here, the epitope A recognize the antibody A, which is compatible. So epitope A cannot recognize the antigen B or C. So it is very specific mechanism. So how antigen recognition is occur, especially uh, when come in contact with the T cells. So this is uh, the cytoplasm of the T cells. This is basically the whole T cells. And if, if you can see, there are two types, two different uh, polypeptide chain, the alpha chain and beta chain. 
and the upper part have the variable region and extending downward is the constant region. So T cells will bind to antigen fragment display on presented or presented on host cells. So this part will uh, come in contact or uh, attach to the antigen fragment that display on the uh, infected cells or the host cells. And usually it will bind to the MHC and peptide complex. So if you look at here, so MHC is the molecule uh, that host protein display the antigen fragment on the cell surface. So example, this is antigen presenting cells. So the pathogens come in and then being digested by the lysozyme and then expressing the peptide on the surface. That peptide is making complex with the MHC molecule. MHC molecule is um, normally express uh, different types on different types of uh, immune cells. So MHC will bind to the peptide that this complex will be recognized by the T cells antigen receptor, the T cells. So the TC, T cells have the antigen receptor that recognize the MHC complex with the peptide. So, so this um, mechanism here will further activate uh, the T cells for uh, the immune response later. So you have to know how the antigen recognition is occur. It's by recognizing the T cells, um, recognition of the T cells antigen receptor with the MHC uh, complex binding with uh, the peptide. Okay. So I think uh, you all okay here? Okay, so the interaction is necessary for the T cells activation to participate in adaptive immune response. So please um, be clear and understand on how the antigen recognition by the T cells occur. Okay, when I ask, um, let's say, uh, write a short essay about um, the antigen recognition by the T cells, for example, and you should be able to describe from the phagocytosis process, how the peptide is uh, expressing on the surface and how it making complex with uh, MHC molecules. So MHC molecules have two types, one and two. So which one is which? So you need to know MHC one or two, and then how the T antigen receptor recognize uh, the complex because it has the antigen binding site. So antigen binding site is specific uh, to, to each antigen, okay? So that's why we call the adaptive immunity is the specific immunity because it recognizes particular antigen. Okay, so this is another figure illustration for to ease your understanding on how antigen recognition by the T cells occur. So let's say this is the antigen presenting cells where the phagocytosis is occurring and expressing the endogenous uh, antigen or peptide fragment on its surface. The antigen fragment will uh, making complex with MHC class 2, which express on the antigen presenting cells. That the complex will be recognized by the antigen receptor, which has specific antigen binding site to this peptide antigen. Okay, so this uh, recognition will further activate the T helper cells here to release a cytokines. That cytokines will involve in cells interaction, for example, with the B cells to further activate the B cells to involve or drive the humoral immunity. That is number one. And number two, upon activation of the helper T cell also, will activate the cytotoxic T cells to involve or to mediate the cell mediated immunity by um, through the cell program death, for example, directly killing the infected cell. So this is one type and this is one type. What happened uh, upon the activation of the T helper cells? Okay, so everyone clear? All right. Can I proceed or you, can you understand this mechanism? on how the antigen recognition occur and what happened when the T helper cell is activated. All right? I have, yes, uh, Okay, I have another example after this on 
um, the cell mediated immunity. So maybe um, you can have your basic understanding here, so that we will can uh, we will proceed with uh, other example later. Okay. So just now is antigen and MHC, the major histocompatibility complex, also play important role for antigen recognition. So what it is. It is a protein found on the surface of the cells that help the immune system to recognize the foreign substance. And it found in all vertebrates and it involves mainly in cell cell interaction. So in human, it is also called human leukocyte antigen. So if you look at a different illustration, MHC, uh, they sometimes use the HLA. HLA also is the same with the MHC, but usually you will see um, the MHC. Okay. And there are two classes of MHC, which is a class one and class two. And class one express on surface of almost every cell. But for MHC class two, is it is only uh, expressed on the surface of immune system, cells of the immune system. So that is diff different between class one and class two. So let's look at more detail. So MHC class one allow NK cells and cytotoxic T cells to recognize foreign cells that attach on abnormal cells, MHC1. And it usually have the presenting endogenous antigens on its surface, uh, derived from the viral proteins, uh, proteins from intracellular bacteria and also tumor antigens. And usually the normal cell or healthy cell present the self antigen that are displaying as the MHC1. That when NK cells recognize the MHC1 on the normal cell, it will uh, recognize this is a healthy cell. So they cannot attack its own cells. If it does happen, then it is when the autoimmune disease occur. It is when your uh, cells of immune system attacking the healthy cells. Okay. So the infected cells present antigen from a pathogen, a tumor and cancer cell present altered or zero self antigen, I mean already altered antigen. So when the NK cell recognize uh, the MHC1 on the tumor or cancer cell, so it will recognize that this is um, not healthy cells, this is cancerous cell, so they will proceed with the killing uh, mechanism. Okay. So this is uh, the virus infected cells, for example. So it have expressing MHC1 on it, and then when recognized by the cytotoxic T cells or NK cells, it will be um, the, the, the death mechanism will be uh, activated here. So this is the process of uh, endogenous antigen presentation, uh, specifically for MC, uh, MHC1. So endogenous antigen, which is produced within the cell itself, is degraded within the cytoplasm into the peptide. For example, uh, during the viral infection, so when, when the virus infect the cells, they will replicate, right, making a new virus. So during the viral replication, there are viral protein that being synthesized. That synthesize the viral proteins will be moved towards the endoplasmic reticulum and then uh, move outside from the cells, expressing as a uh, peptide class 1 MHC complex at the surface of the infected cells. So this is how uh, the endogenous antigen is processed and presented on, this, on the surface of the infected cells. Thank you. So MHC1 specifically for the endogenous antigen presentation. How about MHC2? So it allows T cells to recognize antigen fragment attached to APC MHC2. And it usually presenting exogenous antigens on its surface, for example, derived from the bacteria, fungi, protozoa, free viruses, and etc. And the APC display antigen fragments of the pathogens by attaching it to MH2 on its plasma membrane. Okay, so let's say this is an antigen presenting cell, for example, the macrophages. So when there is a phagocytosis, the cells expressing the peptide releases uh, by the phagocytosis process at the surface and making complex with the MH, MHC2 on its surface. That letter will be recognized by the T helper cells. So MHC2 specific to the exogenous antigen presentation. Okay, let's see here. So let's say this is uh, macrophages or antigen presenting cells. When there is um, phagocytosis occur, so the peptide will be exposed to the outer layer or surface of the antigen presenting cell, making complex with the MHC2. So when you look at MHC2, you already know that it is for exogenous antigen 
presentation. That letter will be recognized by the T helper cells. Okay, that is the difference between MHC class one and MHC class two. Okay, different antigen presentation, either exogenous or endogenous. All right. So you have to know upon viral uh, infection what uh, receptor is being. Uh, release or present on the surface of the infected cells. Okay, upon a phagocytosis process or macrophages mechanism of mediated phagocytosis, what a receptor, MHC receptor presented on its surface? MHC2. Okay, so this is the main, um, I think the main, the most uh, crucial process in cell mediated immunity, which is the cytotoxic T cells or CTL mediated cytotoxicity respond. So what is cytotoxicity? So if you look at here, upon antigen uh, recognition, the T helper cell will be activated. And upon activation, there is some releases of the cytokines which further activate the B cells. So this one, we will learn it uh, next week, okay? But today, upon activation of the T helper cells, will like, further activate the cytotoxic uh, cells to mediate a cell death program or mechanism in the target or infected cells and also creating a memory that will be used to facilitate the second or subsequent exposure later. Okay, so let's see how, uh, what is the mechanism mediated by cytotoxic T cells. So cytotoxic T cells recognize fragments of foreign proteins produced by infected cells and process and accessory proteins that bind class 1 MHC molecules. So the activated cytotoxic T cells secrete proteins that disrupt the membrane of target cells and trigger apoptosis. So this is the same uh, mechanism that involve with the cytotoxic T cells recognize the uh, class 1 MHC molecule uh, co making complex with the antigen receptor that later it will release uh, that attachment of the uh, cytotoxic T cells to the membrane, uh, to the uh, outer layer of the infected cell, we release the porphyrins and the granzyme that later will form the granules at the surface of the cells and then eventually killing it. So this is more detailed uh, processes of um, how the CTL mediated killing of the target cells. So the first one is antigen recognition. It refers to the binding of the antigen to T cell receptor of the uh, T, T cells. And when inactive uh, TC or cytotoxic cell encounter is antigen complex MHC1 proteins on the surface of a virus infected or cancer cells, it binds to the complex. Okay, so here the inactive uh, cytotoxic cell making contact with uh, the M MHC antigen complex that further activated uh, the, T, the T cells, the TC cells, the cytotoxic T cells. And upon activation, it will uh, enhance the proliferation and differentiation of cytotoxic T cells, forming a clone or population of identical cells which create the immunologic memory of the cytotoxic T cells here. So this is the inactive cytotoxic T cells upon antigen recognition, so it will be activated. And it will be, it will be further proliferate and differentiate into more cytotoxic T cells. Okay. So you have to know about the core stimulation as well, where, for example, the antigen presenting cell phagocytize the process or process the insert fragment of the antigens into the plasma, which associated to MHC2. And the APC uh, present the antigen to the inactive uh, T cells, which is located in the lymphatic tissue. So the receptor, the antigen receptor of the inactive helper T cell will recognize uh, the APC uh, presenting the complex of MHC2 and the uh, peptide antigen. And for example here, the T helper will co-stimulate it by releasing the interleukin-1 uh, by the APC and also uh, TH proliferate and secrete a variety of other cytokines, for example, interleukin-2. 
And the interleukin-2 will act as a co-stimulator for antigen-bound uh, cytotoxic T cells. And interleukin-2 will also act as an autocrine, which increase the proliferation of the TH. So it involves in autocrines mean the cells releasing uh, the interleukin, and then the interleukin will enhance the cells to further proliferate and differentiate into more of its clones that will create um, the immunologic memory of the helper T cells. Okay, so this is this is an example of when uh, the cytotoxic T cell is activated, there are also cytokines being released. An example of the cytokine is IL1 and uh, interleukin-1 and interleukin-2. The interleukin-2 involved in autocrine, which upon the secretion will activate the cell that releasing it to be more actively proliferate and also differentiate. Okay, let's see more for the detail. Okay, we'll see uh, the functions of the cytokines, uh, the last two slides, okay, but we will look at the how uh, the killing mechanism by the cytotoxic T cells occur. So the first one is by cytolysis or lysis, where releasing of perforins or granzyme to the surface of the infected cell will eventually uh, killing it by the apoptosis. Yeah. So this is the activated cytotoxic T cell releasing granzyme to the infected cells, creating a granule that eventually will uh, killing the cells by apoptosis or cell death. Okay. And also um, releasing the lymphotoxin which directly, which directly killing the target cells by the NA fragmentation and also the phagocytosis where a cytokine known as as gamma interferon will enhance the phagocytic activity of macrophages, which ingest and kill the target cells. Okay, in innate immunity, there is also a phagocytosis, but somehow, if the pathogen is more potent or stronger, it needs more um, booster or help from the adaptive immunity to make it more efficiently, um, to, to make it more efficient in uh, eliminating or phagocyting the pathogen okay. okay so this is an example when the cytotoxic uh, t cells attach to the target cell that is where the perforins will be released and then attach to the surface of the target cells and then um, there is pore or granule to be um, vacuole to be um, to, to form on the surface of the target cells for so this is for example and then this is eventually will promote the cell death of the target cells. Okay. Okay, the cytokines. So last week, I already explained uh, different types of cytokine be released upon uh, stimulation by inflammatory response, right? Okay, so for today, we're going to learn how cytokine involved in cell-cell communication or interaction. So for example, one cell, one immune cell, producing uh, or secreting the cytokines upon stimulation or triggered by a stimulus. So there is high expressions of uh, gene expression of the cytokines happen in the cell that will further release the cytokine outside the cells and then it will be targeted to the receptor on the effector or target cells. So this is how, and then further activated uh, the target cells to be uh, for different types of biological role, for example, So upon um, recognition of the um, cytokines to the receptor of the target cells, so it will involve in different types of immune response, for example, by stimulating or inhibiting the activation of cells, proliferation of cells, differentiation of cells, secretion of antibody by plasma cells, or secretion of cytokines by immune cell. If there is interaction with immune cell, it could release other cytokines. If um, the cytokine uh, targeting the plasma cell is involved in the secretion of antibody. Okay. It consists of proteins, peptides, or glycoproteins, and it involves mainly in autocrine, paracrine, and endocrine signaling as an immunomodulating agent or communication agent between um, cells. Okay, and it, in, and it produced in response to an immune, immune stimulus. For example, when macrophages exposed to pathogens, 
So they will really release inflammatory cytokines. So I already mentioned it last week. Um, so I think you still remember what types of cytokines been released, right? So different types of cytokines, interleukin, interferon, tumor necrosis factor, complement C, okay? So for today, we are going to uh, learn it in general. And upon recognition of antigens from the IPC, the T helper cells will be activated and release the cytokines for the T and B cells activation and proliferation, okay? So that is the functions of the... Um, cytokines upon it release or secretion. So let's say, for example, in autocrine activation, the cytokine binds to and stimulate the cell that produces it. So for example, one cell uh, produce and secrete the cytokines. The cytokine itself will um, interact or stimulate the cell that producing it, you know, to, to, to further activate the cells. And in paracrine action, the cytokine binds to and stimulate cell adjacent to one that producing it. So one cell produce um, or secrete the cytokines and then the cytokines um, binds to other cell. We call it as a paracrine action. And also there are endocrine action where the cytokines binds to and stimulate cell distant from one that producing it. For example, the cytokine being circulated in the blood lymph blood or lymph uh, system and then go to make in contact with other distant cell. That is endocrine action. Okay. So you should know, uh, I give an example just now, release of interleukin-2. Release of interleukin-2 by um, Yeah, release of the interleukin-2 by T helper cells will further uh, stimulate the T helper cells to be more actively proliferate here. Okay, more actively proliferate. So that is autocrine action. Helper T cells uh, secrete IL-2. That IL-2 will help the T helper cells to actively proliferate to making more clones of helper T cells. Okay, so that is uh, an example on how the cytokines work. Okay, so far okay. That is going to be our last slide. So I have one slide for summary for today's uh, lecture, which uh, you should know that the adaptive immunity or specific immunity develops following entry of microbe into the host um, that is when the Im innate immunity fails to get rid of the microbe or insufficient in controlling or eliminating the microbe. So that is when the adaptive immunity is activated. So it has a memory, immunologic memory, to deal with the subsequent exposure and also happens through specific of lymphocytes, the T cells that mediate the cell uh, mediated immunity and also B cells that involve in antibody or humoral immunity.